Or we'll be taking a closer look at the lowest body of water on Earth, located in part right here in Israel, the Dead Sea. Once a tourist attraction and one of the world's first health resorts, the Dead Sea is receding at an alarming rate. Multiple canals and pipelines were proposed to reduce its recession. And though the dangers have been known for years, little has been done on the ground. And some say it could be too late. We'll discuss the present-day challenges facing the Dead Sea and try to to break down a comprehensive plan for the future. Let's get started with this report by Maya Margit on one of the major environmental problems caused by the decline of the Dead Sea, the creation of sinkholes. A place of staggering beauty with rock and salt formations not seen anywhere else on Earth and water with unique therapeutic properties, the Dead Sea. But could one of the world's most famous natural landmarks soon be a vision of the past? Water levels are dropping at an alarming rate, going down by more than one meter or three feet each year. If this continues, some are saying that the Dead Sea may dry out completely by 2050. Other scientists contend the Dead Sea will never disappear entirely, but will be reduced to a small pool so salty that evaporation will no longer be possible. One thing's for sure, it's drying up, and drying up quickly. Shorelines are collapsing, causing huge, dangerous pits known as sinkholes. Sinkholes like these first appeared in the late 1980s. Now initially, you only had a few of these scattered around the area. But today, there are over 6,000 sinkholes around the Dead Sea. And each day, new ones appear, threatening one of Israel's biggest tourist destinations. This used to be the uh, mineral beach. Uh, and you can see that today, uh, this area has completely um, been uh, overtaken by sinkholes that have caused this massive collapse and ecological degradation of the area, basically making this place completely um, uh, inaccessible to the public. And the result is that the beach has now been closed. Mineral Beach is just one of several public beaches that are no longer accessible due to sinkholes. Zabu is a local tour guide who lives near the Dead Sea. He says he can't bring tourists to see the environmental damage because the areas are closed off and insurance won't cover it because the sinkholes are dangerous. The salt you see here is what causes the sinkholes. I'm just holding a small piece of the salt, but the salt continues underground for 20 meters. Water can dissolve salt, and the groundwater which comes from the nearby mountains carries the salt away and creates gaps in the earth, thereby creating sinkholes. It's not a very strong salt because it contains so many other minerals. So what's killing the Dead Sea? According to scientists, there are three factors at play. Water flow, climate change, and industry. Ecopeace is an environmental NGO through which Palestinians, Jordanians and Israelis work together on water-related issues. Today the Dead Sea is getting maybe 5% or less of the historic water inflow. The southern Jordan River that was the main contributory uh, of water to the Dead Sea is almost dried up. We built dams on all the major rivers and there's hardly any inflow, but a lot of uh, evaporation. The lack of water flow from the Jordan River is the primary reason for receding water levels. Climate change is also to blame. Rainfall in the Middle East has dropped by 10% since 1950. Another culprit? Cosmetics factories. Factories extract the water for their mineral-rich content. But hope is not entirely lost. Dr. Clive Lipchin of the Arava Institute for Environmental Studies says there are several possible solutions to the crisis. The solution on one hand is very simple. You have to stabilize the water level of the Dead Sea. You have to halt the receding water levels. And the only way that you can do that is to put water back into the Dead Sea that will balance out the amount of water that evaporates every single year. One possibility, the Red Sea Dead Sea solution. 
This would mean building a pipeline for some kind of conveyance to transport huge quantities of water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. Another option would be to connect the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea, something Dr. Lipchin believes would be more economical. It might sound like a quick fix, but nothing about the Dead Sea is simple. So Israel's annual water budget for all of its water needs is 2 billion cubic meters per year. We have to bring back 50% of that just to stabilize the water level, the same amount every single year. Government inaction, coupled with industry demands and water scarcity, mean that many residents in the area are not very hopeful a solution will be reached. We are lost. We don't feel that anybody is really interested in helping us. We lost most of our livelihood. There are two uh, villages that are badly affected by the sinkholes and that lost a lot of businesses. One of them is ours. It's clear for most that the Dead Sea is dying and time is running out to stop or even reverse the damage. A future that's not as far off as it seems, but also not set in stone. Reporting from the Dead Sea in Israel, Maya Margit, I-24 News.